Go where your best prayers take you and clench the fists of your spirit and take it easy. Breathe deeply of the glad air and live one day at a time. Know that you're precious and learn to trust. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. I hope all of you have had a wonderful Thanksgiving and you're continuing that this weekend with family and friends. And I hope all of you ate too much food because I did. That's what you're supposed to do. You get one chance at it and you better take it. So I always do. And then I hope you also had a good, great next big day in the culture calendar. Black Friday. Now, how many of you do Black Friday? Come on, tell the truth. See, there are three people that are telling the truth, and the rest of you are liars. <laughs> <coughs> I know, and I know some people, no, that's not true. I know some women who do it, and they have a little, little nucleus, and they go like at 11 o'clock at night on Thanksgiving evening. They stay till 3 in the morning. They go home and go back at 7 and do it again. And they just have a great ton of fun. Sounds insane to me, but whatever. But I was thinking about them and thinking all of us that, you know, it might be fun to have a little bit of a report of Black Friday from the front line. Those are the people who actually have to work. The cashiers and the people checking us out and all that stuff. So I've got a couple of stories for you. These are true. This one you may have seen. It was on television. It was at the mall in Chattanooga. So it's 5 in the morning. There are, um, it was a store called Pink, and there were about 400 people standing at those big sliding doors waiting to get in. So the cameraman's there. He's live with it. And I saw it, of course, on repeat later in the day. And um, all those people are mashing to get in. And, you know, it, it, there's space for about 20 of them, and there are 400 people at the door. And you could see the manager behind there going kind of like, Everybody be calm. It's going to be okay. You can see him doing this. So then he opens those doors, and guess what? They run right over him. I mean, run him down. There's a young woman who is the, a clerk there, and I guess she was supposed to be a greeter. She starts backpedaling as fast as she can to get away, has nowhere to go. She turns and jumps upon a center table to avoid the crowd. So now she's up there. Where is she going to go? You know what she starts doing? This is great. She starts picking up these hoodies that everybody wants and starts yelling out, large, throws them, small, throws them. It was great. It was fabulous. I thought, that's a creative girl. I'm going to hire her. All right, there was another one. The store opened at 5 in the morning. And um, after a few minutes, you know, the cashier, this young woman said, gosh, she looked up, and I don't know how these people shop so fast, but she had 5 people, 10 people, 15 people, and then she had like 50 people in line. She said it was that way all day. She said, I just turned into a robot. She said, I didn't even look up at the people. She said, they would hand me their stuff. I'd scan it. They'd hand me their gift card, put it through, hand me their credit card, debit card, put it through, sign it, put it in a bag, hand it out. She just kept doing it, kept doing it. So then, and she said, you know, what I would do is I'd always cut those, you know, credit, those uh, debit cards, uh, pardon me, the, uh, the, the little value card up so they couldn't use it again. It was dead, so I cut it in half. So she's doing it. So she took this one person, she did the gift card, did the ATM card, then she just took her scissors and cut that ATM card right in half. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all get it, because you know what the woman did? The woman went and fainted and hit the floor right there. Not joking. Now, I've got 50 of those, but I'm going to stop right there. You know, these shoppers, and probably all of us, need a little navigating during the holiday season, and not just for shopping, you all know that. And maybe you could pick up, and I meant to bring it down here to show it to you, you can actually get this online, this is wonderful. The Covenant Health System has put out a little PDF, you know what that is? A PDF is a file that you can download and print like a little book, and they have printed this thing called the Holiday Survival Guide. It is fabulous. I'm not kidding. It's 18 pages long. <laughs> the most wonderful time of the year is also the most stressful time of the year in our nation. There's great evidence of it. Uh, talk to your favorite psychologist near you, and they will tell you what they see during and right after the holiday. But I have to say this holiday survival guide is full of great advice, really and truly about shopping, like make a budget, stick to it. Spread your shopping over some time. Don't try to get everything for everybody. Get something, have some fun wrapping. Make it a family affair or friend affair. Make it fun, don't go overboard. There are tips on travel stress and closer to home and for those for whom the season brings moments of grief and loss, how to pay attention to oneself and to take care of yourself. 
to watch your drinking, watch your eating, watch your sleeping, watch for the warning signs of depression. Serious things and good things, good advice. It's a great piece of work. The reason I tell you about the survival guide is after seeing it, a friend sent it to me a couple of weeks ago, and I thought, God, this is clever. And I'm going to have copies. Y'all need to, if you need one, pick one up. Um, it's really good. What it reminded me of is we spend an awful lot of time this time of year with everything out there. It just grabs us. It energizes us. It speeds us up. It does all kind of good things for us. And it creates a tremendous amount of energy in the busyness. But what really matters most is not what's out there, but what's in here. What is in here is what is most important this time of year. And today, you and I have been given some great good news. Because we are reminded, we're focusing each week on the little collect, that prayer that we say that collects our thoughts and brings us together. That God is and has and always will be sending us messengers. There's a theological point to that. You see, we spend an awful lot of time thinking we've got to chase here and chase there to find God and do this and morally get prepared and be the right vehicle and all that stuff. The colic says, no, that's not right. The message in the story is that God is coming to you. You don't have to chase God. Just look up and you will see God. God is coming to you. God's self is here for you. Did you hear the prophet Jeremiah? My favorite passage, 31, 31. Thus says the Lord, I've put my law within them. God says, I will write it upon their hearts. I will be their God. They shall be my people. No longer shall they say, know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest from the least of them to the greatest they shall all know me that line reminds me of a seminary professor I had Harry Pritchett who had been a parish priest and I mean a brilliant parish priest in Alabama before he came and joined my seminary staff. He had a great deal of influence on me. He's a great storyteller, but he also had great wisdom. So I want to tell you one of his stories I remember. He was um, in his parish in Huntsville, Alabama, and every year he and the congregation did this wonderful thing. They had a, um, a center just a half a block away for children and young, ad young adults with cerebral palsy. And so they would do this neat thing where the kids would get together and do their, um, they would do a big pageant and then kind of a fair and have food. Well, the kids would come over for it, and the kids at the church got to put it on. It was a great production. And then the congregation would serve food, and they would, it was just a great affair. It's just fabulous, he said. And they did it for a couple of years. And then one of the teachers from the school came and said, can I make an appointment? I want to talk to you. And Harry said, sure. And she said, I have an idea for next year. She said, instead of you doing the pageant, we want to do the pageant. You go ahead and fix the food, but our kids want to do the pageant. What do you think? And Harry thought, wow, I wonder what that, how that's going to work. But he said, yeah, okay, absolutely, we'll do that. You do that. So he said the day came. It was a cold, bitter day in early December, perfect for this. Felt like Christmas, looked like Christmas. So all the kids come. Well, now they're sitting in the church to watch the pageant, not do it. The adults in the congregation, just like us, they're sitting to watch the pageant. So he said there was a little music, a little intro, and then, lo and behold, right up the center aisle came Mary and Joseph. One little black boy and one little white girl rolling their wheelchairs. And he said then, the angel of the Lord came right behind them, announcing the birth of Jesus. And she had that nervous tick syndrome within the palsy so she was shaking and he said actually he said it was marvelous her motions almost were like this kinetic energy of the announcement of what she was there to do he said then the wise men came he said it took them a while to get there because all the wise men were on crutches 
And he said, you know, it went on and on. He said it was in fascinating. He said, and the narrator, they just picked this wonderful little girl to narrate. Well, she had a very strong, with her neurological disorder, speech impediment. He said they couldn't understand a word she said. Nobody cared. They all knew the story. He said it was magical. Magical. Then this is what he taught us after he told us this story in class. And I'm going to quote him. See, gentlemen, ladies, the simple truth for the manger is clear. Some of us have cerebral palsy and some of us do not. Some of us are children and some of us are not. Some of us are black and some of us are not. Some of us are poor and some of us are not. But we are all human beings and we are all peculiarly separate and yet at the same time we are peculiarly united. One is thing is for sure. We are all in some ways like that baby Jesus coming into this world. You know, soon, very soon, the choir is going to lead us in singing this sweet little anthem and carol that you all know. You could sing it now. We won't, but I'll remind you the words. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by, yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are born in thee tonight. Do you see, all our preparations are fabulous. A little kinetic, a little stressful. We're about the right thing. We are all trying to recreate again this hope. This hope that this holiday season will repair our lives and relationships. Will bring us closer to those that we love. Heal our wounds and mend our fractures. Bring peace and hope, charity into our hearts and not only for us we hope for the world around us you see all of us have God he is born into this world he is in your hearts amen